Trading has given or continuing to give us the, the lifestyle that we want, really. So it's great. I'm never going to be a multimillionaire. I don't care about that. Don't need to be a multimillionaire. So long as I'm happy and we've got the, the income coming in and we can live the life that we want and we can travel to the countries that we want. That's all I want. Don't need to set the world on fire at my age. <laughs> started a long time ago. I started in the early 90s, you know, learning the basics of trading. And, and I've realized that that was my, my vehicle to do something for myself. I didn't want to get stuck into the rat race. And, and everyone always said, oh, you know, it's great to get a great job. You'll get retirement, you know, then you'll be set for life and stuff. And I was like, you know, I don't want to work all my life and do something for someone else and not, you know, gain those benefits. So, you know, when I noticed trading, what trading did to my mentor in, in the beginning, he was able to travel a lot and I love to travel and it opened up a lot of uh, avenues. I was able to, you know, just like I said, travel. This is, a, this is something that you could set yourself up and you could do anywhere in the world. I never really thought about it when I was younger because I didn't think about it. I, I liked what I was doing and I always liked what I was doing, but it got to the point, you know, the str I thought I could do this forever, grind it out 10 hours a day and it just started to get stressful you're tensing your neck and your body and you know you burn through your adrenals you're drinking coffee more you're you just start blinking more you're it's tough on you to be in front of that screen for a decade or more and i said it's funny but it's it's tough so i started to kind of convert to more of i really wanted to have and then i realized that the reason i made money and what made me successful was really identifying big opportunities that happened couple times a month, 10 to 20 times a year. And if I can just zero in on that stuff more, I will make a lot more money. I can trade bigger and I don't need to pay attention as much. So that's what I'm working towards now. And I've been doing with some success, just still trying to get better at it, but I've been pretty successful at it. And it's interesting that I think going forward, I'll make a lot more money working a lot less because I, I have more so I can trade bigger than I, when I first started, but also you've built up those skills and you know kind of what you're looking for versus in the beginning you're just in there every day you're taking swings at everything trying to figure out kind of what you want to be doing and then that goes how it goes but so i i think it's a combination of physical stress what do you want out of your life longevity what does it look like for me usually when you go to a certain level if you want to get to the next level or the level after it's a different move it's not the same thing it's not uh, the same character you know what i mean it has to be a, and that's tough that's where the coaching, the personal growth comes in to make that jump. So that's kind of what I'm working on now. So it doesn't matter what markets you tried, doesn't matter what time frame you tried, doesn't matter what instruments you tried, and it doesn't matter what techniques you tried, there are some irrefutable laws you have to follow. You have to follow to basically survive and then succeed in the markets. A new trader you have to have a good foundation i think you have to learn a, a good foundation you know momentum trading is, it seems easy enough to um to get into a good stock and have it run and take and take your money off like i said a lot of people will do that these days because they're just starting out and they'll get into the the wave of um, the robin hood traders and stuff but eventually that, i think that catches up to you. you you can't just run that it's like being on a hot streak in cards you know that is no rhyme or re reason to it you're just being lucky so you have to get something, uh, you have to develop a, a business plan, like I always said, identify your weaknesses. That's what I had to do, identify your weaknesses. I was a very unorganized and stuff, so I had to get organized. Um, I had to slow down on my trading. And when I started doing that, I, I realized I was picking better stocks and being being um, a better trader. So I, over trading, not having the force to trade, not having to be in a trade, there's so many different aspects to trading. Um, but I would say not over trading, having a good foundation and learning some good techniques. You know, learning that stochastic divergence technique is a great place to start. It's, it's not a hard thing to do. And that way it gives you a foundation to look for and then you can build things around it. If you believe in some to say, you believe in, um, you know, a certain indicator, you add that to maybe something you gain from someone else and say, well, that works great. I'm gonna add my indicator to it. And then you start building your own method and then you could, you know, start becoming successful. One of the things you've got to, you've got to get good at is actually just the, the craft of trading itself. So just, you know, the uh, understanding the markets, you know, you've got to kind of be able to analyze, 
Uh, you've got to be able to kind of find opportunities. You've got to be able to manage your risk and your money. So there's, there's kind of the, the trading component piece, the craft piece. Um, and then there's the mind and the body, and also it's the psychology and the physiology, which obviously is, is, is my domain. So I think it's really important to recognize that probably for newer traders, there's a bias towards mastering the craft. I think early on, you've really got to focus on getting the basic skills and the competencies in place. As you go further down the road of trading, I think then the bias becomes more. Once, you, once you've got a good level of competency in the craft, the role of the mind and the body play an increasingly important piece to the point where probably for the very best traders, it's probably the largest piece of the puzzle is, is probably what's going on in the mind and the body um, and how that enables you then to kind of maximize uh, the craft as such. Um, so I mean, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of pieces. If we go on the mindset side, there's, I think there's a development of a mental framework. So a, a mindset, how you think about yourself as a trader, how you think about the markets, how you think about risk, uncertainty and winning and losing. So there's the development ongoing of that. Um, inside that are probably some mental skills, like we've talked about some mindfulness. I would say that's a mental skill. So the ability to have this present moment awareness, which I think is really important for a number of reasons. One of which is the ability to be able to notice and observe what's happening within you as it's happening. So we can have a chance to regulate it. Um, being able to work with thoughts that show up. So sometimes if we're in trading, we get hooked by thoughts that might be unhelpful, needing a trade to win, an anxiety or a doubt about getting into the market. So being able to work with thoughts that show up. Likewise, I think you know managing emotions is, is a, a mental skill that needs to be developed and how we do that. So what we do with them when they show up is really important. Um, then I think there's a piece about, a big piece really, this goes into our, our previous chat about discomfort, which is about recognizing the need to be able to take action even though it's uncomfortable to take that action you know, i think a lot of traders um their psychological challenges are because uncomfortable thoughts or emotions or sensations show up and that's perfectly normal but they read it as being not normal or as being negative or unhelpful and they create aversions to those so they kind of try to avoid them and when we try to avoid the discomfort we unfortunately often engage in trading behavior which reduces our profitability. So, you know, if we try to avoid a loss in the short term, that can feel quite good. But we might end up with bigger losses over time. If we don't take trades, then we might avoid losing on that trade, but we miss out on the profits of that trade and so on. So, you know, I think on the body side, I think how we manage the stress response is really important. So the physiological level uh, and how we look after ourselves in terms of just basic energy needs. So, you know, reducing the impact of fatigue. So sleeping well, eating well, um, moving, uh, getting recovery and all these factors. I think there's a, it's, I think it's a big puzzle. Um, it is my short answer. There's a lot. It's a big jigsaw puzzle, and there's lots of pieces in it. And it's probably different for different people. Some things are the same. Some things are different based on what you're trading and how you're trading it. The hardest part is probably the discipline. In my previous business, I had to be very reactive. Uh, whereas in trading, that's the last thing you want to be. You, you cannot be reactive because then you're going down a dark hole with revenge trading. And so for me, it was building up my discipline to just stick to the rules. Trust my data and stick to the rules. And that's, that was the hardest bit, the discipline. Mindset, it's the mind. Learning to trade, I think, is easy. It's actually trading. That's the hard bit. <laughs> I now hire a coach that helps me, uh, and that's kind of where I'm getting this, but it's years later, it's actually a lot of stuff, just personality and childhood things that come up in trading. And what I mean by that is, my dad would wake up really early in the morning and he was self-made entrepreneur and it was work hard, get up at six and keep working and good things will happen to you. And that was something I carried with me and it's a really tough thing to carry with you in trading. And the reason that is, is because you can work really hard but you might not get results in a linear fashion at all. You, I would never say you shouldn't work hard but looking at charts on Sunday night for three hours isn't gonna mean you're gonna make any money. In fact, it might mean you're gonna force on Monday and do worse. Because a lot of times stuff shows up kind of innately on its own. It's a little bit intuitive and you kind of know it when you see it. And there's a very delicate process to figuring that out. And this idea of working hard nonstop and being kind of a 
You know, in basketball, they call you a gym rat. When you never left the gym, you're always shooting. And that attitude, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it doesn't necessarily work that way in trading. So I've had to learn to unwind a lot of that and let things kind of flow when they flow. When the market shows up and it's my game, I'm successful. But when I force it when it's not, it's painful. And I think that's the biggest thing that I have had to learn and I continue to kind of work with even now. Discipline is an interesting one, Etching. So, I mean, I think it's, it means different things to different people. Uh, I think traditionally we would say, you know, it's have a plan, follow the plan. Some traders are more fluid than that. So some traders are kind of much more in the flow. So maybe on the outside, they don't look that disciplined, but they do have a framework. But I think, you know, discipline really begins with, or, or improving it begins with the clarity of what my process is. So it might be a very intuitive process, or it could be, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight pages of, of bullet points or diagrams. So, but there's some steps that people take that enable them to make money in the markets and there's some kind of edge. So I think clarity of that, you need to know what that is to begin with is really important. Then I think if you are able to match your trading approach to, to your own personal strengths and who you are as a person, it makes discipline easier. So if you're trading in a way that's not aligned with your strengths and who you are as a person, then if essentially you're trying to be someone you're not, so you've got to work really hard. So that makes it hard to be disciplined because you're trying to be something that you're not. So I think in the early stages, it's kind of find a process, hopefully with some kind of edge, suits you as a person, that's the starting point. Within that process, preparation, research, evaluate, you know, uh, analysis, how do I get ready are, are some of the basics of, of, that, of that discipline. Execution, understanding about, you know, when you're executing, what's helpful or, or not helpful for you is really important. It's kind of where's, where's the risk for you? Is it emotions that show up? Is it thoughts and self on So knowing yourself, you know, kind of knowing where the, those crucial spots are where you're likely to maybe make a bad decision and why, and then, you know, doing the work to, to address those areas is really important. Um, evaluation, analysis, I think is a really key part of, of kind of overall discipline. So kind of uh, reflection, again, for some people it's five minutes a day, for other people it's an hour at the weekend, but you know, I think having some reflective process um, is really key. But I think discipline, there's kind of the, the trading part, then there's also at the personal level, you know, if, you're, if your life's really busy and you're trying to do everything in the markets as well, um, you might just be tired and fatigued. Or, or stress because life is busy so then it's hard to be disciplined so you know kind of create an environment that allows you to have the energy and the focus to also be disciplined is very important as well so it's uh, and, and some people by nature are much more disciplined than others so kind of again this is where building it into your trading framework is really important so 